Man, that was crazy. I don't know what that was. You know, with CERN busting everything open nowadays, we don't know what to expect. For entertainment purposes, of course. But what's good, Josh? Your boy Jeski Chuck, man. We back. We made it at home, man. Thank God. Thank the most high that I made it back. Um, it's been quite an experience. Um, but one thing I can say is that I'm glad to be back home and glad to get everything back rolling. And I just want to thank everyone that has been tuning into my lives, you know, checking out my pictures and everything. You know, I appreciate you guys. You know, that means a lot. And um, just bear with me as I get back into the swing of things. Um, this one we're going to be checking out what's busting open in these portals. Yeah, CERN over there in Switzerland. What's really going on? You guys drop in the comments. Tell me what you guys think. But we're going to hop on this jet ski, get on the dark water nines. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I believe those are the fallen angels that have broke out of the river Euphrates that dried up. The fallen angel statue discovered in Russia. What? This is the creepiest thing I've seen in a good minute. There's these dudes. Russian dudes. In Serbia? Siberia. They work in a gravel quarry or something. They were just digging and they found this ginormous statue of this crazy, evil looking angel with its like hood down, but like its eyes and its giant wingspan things and it's like holding a shield and it was kneeling and so these dudes standing up beside this statue their heads didn't even go past the the statue's head and it was kneeling down Ew. and it looks the detail on it is like exquisite like it looks like a uh, angel or man thing oh, wow. that was like frozen in time like it, like fell in a concrete bath or something what does that mean the fallen angel statue discovered in I love it when they show the actual documents that we can access for entertainment purposes, of course, but it also shows just a little bit of validity to what they're saying. Let's go. So we're going to take a look at how sorcerers see and use demons. And then we're going to put it into a Christian perspective and understand that 
demons can actually use your cell phone to gain access to you and your family. Here's how. This is how a sorcerer sees demons. I think demons enjoy their lives by using or residing inside or around us. Most of the time, we obey them without the slightest clue. We are just toys or mediums for demons. They live and enjoy their lives inside us. We have to adapt to their temperaments. We have to follow their instructions. We have to smoke cigarettes for them. We have to drink beer and get extremely angry to please them. We have to stay sad and depressed for them. We have to become extremists and act in negative ways so that they feel good. They just hypnotize us. Have y'all seen the super creepy video of this dude who allegedly finds a fallen angel? The video starts out with them finding what appears to be an angel wing and you can see them kind of like zooming in and flashing the light on it. Then they find a feather with some like blood next to it. Just a fair warning, this next part's pretty creepy. If I seen that thing in the woods, I wouldn't even get close to it. Let me know in the comments what you would do. Bro, I seen that in the woods. I'm booking it. I'm getting straight out of there. Like, it's no time for games. Especially you gonna look dead at me like that. Oh, no. It's time to go. Let's keep it rolling. Here late. Hmm. From the looks of it, I'd say this fellow died from causes unknown. <laughs> Look, there's more. What the heck is this thing? Speaking from a strictly medical point of view, that ain't right. Oh my goodness. What is it, Lisa? It looks like a human skeleton, but these other bones look almost like wings. You mean like? Блин. Вот это да. Короче, разрыли экскаватором такую. Ну я скажу эмоции просто не рассказать. Душа куда то The real weapon of mass destruction they went over to Iraq was for was to get Nimrod because they found his tomb. They raided the, 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 what, the reincarnation chamber that Hillary Clinton said, yeah, we got this. And that's the real weapon of mass destruction because they want to bring him back. Well, let me tell you something. There's something really deep about that. If you look up the story of the Tower of Babel, and in the story of the Tower of Babel, that's Genesis chapter 11, verse 9. That story tells the story of the Tower of Babel, and what happened was is Nimrod was, you know, uh, the, the man on earth, the boss, and he wanted to build a kingdom to heaven to go kill God. So Nimrod was like the literal Antichrist. So what God did is he made him, you know, all everybody that was building this tower speak, you know, 60 different languages and broke us up in tribes. But what I'm saying is, Dominic, what they're trying to do, the NWO is doing the, they're trying to reverse engineer that. They want us under one ruler, one language, one digital currency, because once they do that, once we're under that one world order, that is Nimrod. That is Satan yeah, here on Earth. So thank you. That's exactly what they're thank trying to do, yeah. says at the top can't break the firmament because it heals itself kind of reminds me of a cell wall science Nimrod believed that if he shot an arrow into the clouds above 
it will surely strike an angel. Proof being when the arrow returned to earth, it will be stained with the blood of an angel. God destroyed Tower of Babel so they wouldn't reach the heavens. Same thing with the rockets. They will never reach the heavens. You gotta admit the simil similarities with Nimrod and the arrow and the rocket might be an allegory.
If you're a fan of the literary arts, you might have heard about the Epic of Gilgamesh. Known as the oldest story ever written by man, this epic tells the story of an ancient king who waged war with none other than death itself. Gilgamesh's story has been passed down through the millennia, and interestingly, it appears that every religion or culture has its interpretation of it. However, it's always been thought that the epic was nothing more than a myth made up for people's amusement. There's a popular saying that art imitates life, and while many always thought the tale of Gilgamesh wasn't true, a recent archaeological discovery has disputed that fact. It would appear that what we have long believed about this god-man might not have been so false after all. So look, I know there have been a lot of discoveries made recently that show our world isn't necessarily what it is. However, this one could easily blow the rest out of the water. It's the type of discovery that will make you hold your head and wonder why no one else is talking about it. But we've got all the details you need to know right here. So join us on this incredible journey to the middle of the desert where we uncover one of the most mind-boggling discoveries ever made in recent times. The year was 2003, the location, the Iraqi Desert. Just about a month before the war that decimated the Middle Eastern country, a team of archaeologists and researchers led by Jörg Fassbinder of the Ludwig at Maximilians University of Munich made a startling discovery. Deep in the Iraqi Desert, Fassbinder and his team discovered a huge network of tombs, which they claimed were essentially inhabited by giant human-like beings. They eventually searched even deeper and found the bodies of other giants that had been dead and buried, supposedly for several millennia, as well as items and artifacts that had belonged to them. Besides all of this, the team reportedly discovered an entire landmass and settlement that had been buried for generations. According to Fassbinder, they found over 10,000 hectares of property and land, many of which appeared to have been described in the Epic of Gilgamesh itself. Jörg Fassbinder of the Bavarian Department of Historical Monuments in Munich told the BBC's World Services Science and Action Program, quote, I don't want to say definitively that it was the grave of King Gilgamesh, but it looks very similar to that described in the epic. We found just outside the city, an area in the middle of the former Euphrates River, the remains of such a building which could be interpreted as a burial, Mr. Fassbinder said. In the book, Gilgamesh is described as having been buried under the Euphrates. He also added that they uncovered different Babylonian houses and properties that had been scattered around the area, all of which were buried underground for thousands of years. And now, a few years on, thanks to different whistleblower reports and emails released from top government officials, the truth has finally started to come out. Many believe that the tomb that was actually found was one belonging to Gilgamesh, the ancient king of Uruk. At this point, you probably... We found the giant Gilgamesh tomb, who was half alien and half human. So the Euphrates River is drying up now, and people are sending pictures out like this, saying that this is his tomb, and here's another one with a different tomb. Now, why would anyone even think that there was a tomb at the bottom of the Euphrates River? Well, actually, because it says so here. Literally, they had to divert the waters, um, and then they, even the word Euphrates, and they actually used that back then. Um, and then he, the tomb was built so that no one would ever find it because it was covered over by water. Of course, the drought's now helping show it. But apparently Hillary Clinton spoke to someone a while back on email and was saying that they'd already found Gilgamesh's body and tomb. Now, that's logical because, let's be honest, if I can read that it was built somewhere or buried somewhere under the Euphrates, it wouldn't take an Einstein to work out that you could go there and get his body before anyone realised. Have we found the giant Gilgamesh tomb who was half... I wonder why the American government wanted Gilgamesh, a.k.a. Nimrod's body, so bad. They inquired about him and buried Nephilim. the troll found in the book of giants which by the way white horse stand by for salute report 2-1 over white horse is brown horse stand by to copy line sierra 2-0 personnel line alpha patrolling what appears to be a headquarters break line lima 3-8 sierra 
Tuesday, April 29th, 2003, roughly two months after U.S. forces invade Iraq, BBC News releases an article that is so strange it seems to go against the very nature of our reality. Now, in order to understand the true significance of this article, we need to take a journey back in time, all the way back to approximately 2,500 years before the birth of Christ, and to a place that we now know as modern-day Iraq. And it is here that we begin our story. Tales of supernatural beings can be found all over the ancient world. The Bible, the Book of Enoch, and the Book of Giants, as well as other ancient Jewish texts, all speak of an event where fallen angels descended to earth and fooled mankind with their knowledge of science, war, and beauty. It is also recorded that these fallen angels, or watchers as they are called in the ancient text, manipulated the genetics, the DNA of mankind, creating an actual race of giants as well as other hideous monsters using animal DNA. Descriptions of these disgusting beasts can be found in the Book of Giants, which, by the way, was part of the Dead Sea Scrolls collection. Parallel to that, other ancient texts speak of the same exact event, except it's from the fallen angels, or the Watchers' perspective. In ancient Babylon and Mesopotamia, for example, the Watchers were seen as a good thing, they came to help mankind, and they showed people how to do cool things. And they also created a mighty race of giants, men of renown. However, biblical accounts reveal these things to be evil, fallen angels led by Lucifer himself, who want nothing less than the total destruction of mankind. Quote, According to Mesopotamian myth, there were seven Apkalu before the flood and four afterward. The word Apkalu comes from the Sumerian Ab, meaning water, Gal meaning big, and Lu meaning man. They were considered only partly evil, occasionally dangerous, and capable of malicious witchcraft. They were chimeric in appearance, usually depicted as humanoid with wings, or sometimes as hybrid birdman or bizarre fishman creatures. The antediluvian Apkalu were divine, just like the Watchers. According to one story from the Babylonian period, the Epic of Era, Era was the god of pestilence and plague. Marduk banished the Apkalu to the Abzu as a punishment for provoking him to send the flood. Hmm. Supernatural beings linked to a global flood who are afterward banished to the abyss? Sound familiar? Interestingly, the four Apkalu who appeared after the flood were only partly divine and could mate with humans. Again, like the Watchers, the last of the post-flood Apkalu, Lunana, who was two-thirds Apkalu, matches the status of Gilgamesh, who was described as being two-thirds divine and one-third human. On the cylinder seal, Gilgamesh is called Lord of the Apkalu and is elsewhere credited with bringing back great knowledge that existed before the flood. Scholars who have made the connection between the Apkalu and the Watchers tend to interpret the way the Watchers are portrayed in Jewish literature from Second Temple period, like the Book of Enoch, at least partly as a Jewish response to the Babylonian captivity. It was believed that the Apkalu, though potentially dangerous, had preserved secret pre-flood knowledge prized by the pagan wizards of Babylon. To the Jews, however, such knowledge was evil, and the Watchers were portrayed accordingly in Enochian texts." End quote. So, we have one epic story seen through two different lenses. On the one hand, we have the creator of the universe, the God of the Bible, telling the story. He is saying, yes, these fallen watchers are evil and you need to avoid them at all costs. And on the other hand, we have the account from the watchers themselves saying, hey, that little guy, referring to God, I wouldn't worry about that little guy. Uh, that little fella, well, that little guy, I wouldn't worry about that little guy. Quote, Scholars have known for years that there are parallels in the Mesopotamian legends and the biblical accounts of the patriarchs. Enoch is similar to an antediluvian king named Emadaranki, and Noah is variously called Unapistim in Babylon, Zisudara in Sumer, and Atra Hasis in Akkad. But even those accounts are part of a fallen realm military campaign, a supernatural psyop. For example, the accounts from Mesopotamia portray Gilgamesh as a mighty warrior a hero, two-thirds god and one-third man. He has adventures and slays monsters, notably Hambaba, the defender of the faraway cedar forest, who'd been assigned to terrorize humans by the god Enlil, who is Enki's brother. In the second temple Jewish account known as the Book of Giants, Gilgamesh was, himself, 
one of the gigantic offspring of the Watchers, as was Humbaba, the monster Gilgamesh set out to kill. This is how Gilgamesh was viewed by the Jews between the time of the Babylonian captivity and the birth of Jesus. Basically, he was one of the Nephilim, end quote. One of the Nephilim. In case you don't know what a Nephilim is, it's the unholy offspring between the fallen Watchers and a human woman. Yeah. Moving back to Gilgamesh, he was a giant, part supernatural being, part human, otherwise known as a Nephilim. Now, here's where it gets crazy. Scholars actually believe Gilgamesh existed. And not only that, this article from 2003 the BBC News put out says they may have actually found his tomb. Quote, Gilgamesh tomb believed found. Archaeologists in Iraq believe they may have found the lost tomb of King Gilgamesh, the subject of the oldest book in history. The Epic of Gilgamesh, written by a Middle Eastern scholar 2,500 years before the birth of Christ, commemorated the life of the ruler of the city of Uruk, from which Iraq gets his name. Now, a German-led expedition has discovered what is thought to be the entire city of Uruk, including where the Euphrates once flowed, the last resting place of its famous king. I don't want to say definitely that it was the grave of King Gilgamesh, but it looks very similar to that described in the epic. Jörg Fassbinder of the Bavarian Department of Historical Monuments in Munich told the BBC World Service's Science in Action program, end quote. So let's take a look at this in the big picture and see if anything makes sense. Because as of now, this whole thing still remains a mystery. First off, the Bible says there will be a time when the Nephilim return. Some people believe this is a spiritual return by demonic possession. Others believe it's physically, as in a return of the giants. Fast forward 2,000 years, archaeologists find Gilgamesh's tomb in Iraq, two months after U.S. forces take over the country. Is it possible that when news broke of the discovery of Gilgamesh's tomb, orders were given from the highest possible levels of government? and U.S. troops arrived at the site to seal it off. DNA was collected from the skeleton and brought to a top-secret underground research lab where tests were conducted. Tests involving cloning technologies and CRISPR-Cas9. Of course, the only thing we can do is speculate. So what do you think about this? Do you think they really found Gilgamesh's tomb in 2003 as this article states? If so, what happened to it? And why is there no mention of the contents? Or maybe what they found was so insignificant that they thought all news coverage should just stop. We are observing everything to the west of that MSR. Can you see the palm grove in the northwest quadrant? Call contact. Norman, I see two prominent palm groves. Not sure which one you're calling. Okay, okay. Do you contact the dump truck heading north in the quadrant? Norman, contact the dump truck. In about a minute. White horse, stand by for salute report to... What I want to know is what happened to the body? We haven't heard or seen nothing about it. And there's two different bodies. If you look carefully, people, a lot of people are saying, oh, this is Gilgamesh. Oh, this is Nimrod. Well, we all came to the conclusion that they're the same person. But if you look carefully, there's two different bodies. That's very interesting. Your thoughts in the comments below. I want to dive a little bit deeper on CERN. Let's go. What's really weird is the particular place that CERN was created. CERN. What's really weird is the particular place that CERN was created. CERN itself was built below a old temple of Apollo, which in ancient times was considered to be a portal to the underworld, or CERN is partially situated is called Saint Genus Poli, excuse my French, literally. The name of Poli comes from the Latin Apollicum, and it is believed that in Roman times a temple existed in honor of Apollo. And the people who lived there believed that it is a gateway to the underworld. It is interesting to note that CERN is built on the same spot. What? Electricity? Okay. 
So we are counting down to the start of round three, the moment when the experiments are going to switch on for the first time and be able to record collisions from the Large Hadron Collider at the center of Have you guys ever seen Spider-Man into the Spideyverse? That collider looks awfully familiar. Let's take a closer look. We gotta dive into the jet cave. What's up, what's up, y'all? Today, I'm gonna be talking about a character known as Spot in the movie Across the Spider-Verse. Okay, so Spot was basically a scientist that was created from a hydrogen particle collider. Yes, I'm talking about CERN, big boy, the one we all know about. He basically got sucked into one and got this appearance that you see here, allowing him to be a multiversal being, creating black holes and traveling the multiverse and whatnot. And, you know, CERN was an organization to help to uncover what the universe is made of and how it works, basically, quote unquote. You know, to try to figure out how the Big Bang was made or whatnot. But this CERN machine, this hydrogen particle collider, has been in a lot of fictional pictures that we've seen recently not only has it been in into the spider-verse and across the spider-verse it was also shown in spider-man 2 the new game that came out there was actually even an older movie called super collider the black hole apocalypse yeah and it's funny that all of them have something to do with black holes an honorable mention is a character named blast who actually has the power to create black holes as well and he's also able to teleport across the multiverse as well and teleport different places as well as different things just like spot multiversal crossover is a big thing that we have in the entertainment industry that's being published as well like spider-man fortnite avenger you know doctor strange you know things like that it's all over isn't it so you know they have to tell the truth in movies and entertainment to make it seem fake even though it's real you know this already so with them clashing together antimatter and matter particles, they could be doing exactly what this movie and this game and all these entertainment things are doing. It could be on accident. Or it could be on purpose. But y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments. Oh yeah, share the video. Please, I think that shadow banned me or something. What's up, what's up, y'all? Today, I'm going to be talking about... Is it a coincidence? You guys let me know in the comments below what's really going on. Or if you can connect the dots on any type of anime or video game or movie. I'm sure that it's going to be extremely interesting. Let's talk about it. All right, for those who don't know what this is, this is in Switzerland. This was about five to seven years ago. So when I did the research on this, they said this was a railroad opening ceremony, okay? A railroad opening ceremony. But as you can see, I don't see no railroads here. I mean, you can see the tracks right there, right? You can see the tracks right here. But what kind of ceremony would you need to invite uh, goat heads, um, skull heads, uh, baphomet looking people you know satanists devils like what kind of ceremony would you need in order to invite this type of uh entity and then when you know who their god is their lord you know what i'm saying uh, satan lucifer you can see what it's really all about you know so they are calling their lord then because they know it is the time the time is in you just seen the lights turn to red so let me know what y'all think leave your comments down below share this video all right One thing is undeniably true, that it is strange. What they got working on, I don't know.
They put it right in our faces. This is the city where Satan dwells in. In Revelation, chapter 2, verse 13, the Bible says, I know where you live, where Satan has his throne. Yet you remain true to my name. You did not renounce your faith in me, not even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was put to death in your city, where Satan lives. Well, if you look up the martyr of St. Antipas, you'll see that it was under the reign of Emperor Nero in a city that is now known as Geneva. And if you're wondering what's in Geneva, you'll find the company CERN, whose main mission is to create the God Particle, attempting to split the veil between the supernatural and natural realm, possibly opening a supernatural portal to the underworld. So is it a coincidence that the Bible mentioned that this is the That's it for today's episode. If y'all made it this far, drop the 100s in the comments. So I know you real. I just want to appreciate everyone for tuning in, liking and subscribing, sharing these videos, man. It means a lot, man. We're going to get back on the rhythm and we going, I got a lot of exciting things coming. I got a website, merch. So be on the lookout for that. And yeah, as always, y'all be safe out here, man. And I appreciate all you guys for tapping in. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Let's <laughs> go.